these students, 19 of them in total, arrive at the lab and we welcome them as Argonne staff, new staff members, and then we give them the problem. My name is Julia Ayala and I'm a rising sophomore at Marine Military Academy. My name is Mari Foyer. I'm a rising senior at Walter Payton College Prep. I'm Brandon Patterson. I'm a rising sophomore at Winnie Young. This is one of the other techniques we use called x-ray fluorescence. It's very useful for metals because it can identify specific elements in your sample. And basically the sample is bombarded with gamma rays and the gamma rays will knock an electron from one of the inner orbitals and then when that electron leaves, an electron from one of the second or third orbitals will fall in to fill that empty space. And, that, and then energy is released in the form of an X-ray. And by measuring the energy of the X-rays emitted, you can tell what atom or what, type, what element was in the sample. And another instrument we used was called the Becky line. It's a bright, hollow light that appears around the edge of a sample when it is in liquid with an index of refraction different from its own. The halo can be observed under a microscope and moves towards whichever substance has the higher index of refraction. Another way of figuring out what elements are in a sample is through a pixie or particle-induced x-ray emission. And um, to use this technique, uh, one uses an accelerator to send a proton beam at a target. And uh, this is part of the accelerating uh, column, and here's where we mounted the target. And uh, this is a process similar to X-ray fluorescence, uh, where something with high energy hits the sample, causing the inner electrons to be removed and outer electrons to take its place. This leads to the emission of X-rays, and these can be measured to identify the sample. We uh, used both sample Y and basalt in the accelerator. And as you can see from the graph, uh, these are similar results. 